I grew up building castle Lego and drawing knights. So it stands to reason that once I got into building gliders, I would want to make some that look like dragons. And in fact, I did, starting with these two big ones, which to my surprise were airworthy. So I made a whole bunch of variants, different sizes and colors, and some bird-like dragons. It seems that the more exaggerated the body and wing shapes, the more they look like dragons from TV shows, the worse they fly. So for this particular design, I'm returning to something that is more glider-like. I saved the templates. Yeah, and the materials, cardstock, paper, and chipboard will be familiar to anyone that has seen my videos before. I used an old file folder for the side pieces that is equivalent to about 80 pound cardstock or 215 GSM. And I forgot to embed a machine nut in the head. You should definitely do that for the weight you're going to need. It will save you some trouble later. And this is foam from food packaging. I believe it once held a sandwich or a burrito. Probably not a very good one. about using plenty of glue when you put the pieces of the body together and make sure they are well aligned as the glue is drying. Cut out all the other pieces you're going to need. You'll notice that I made the wing spars out of chipboard rather than pieces of basswood or coffee stir sticks, so it will be ill-advised to throw this particular dragon into big loops or turns just because the wings won't hold up to very much strain. And now the long and tedious process of adding all the scales. Work from the tail to the head, starting on the ventral side and moving to the dorsal side, where you'll need to be more careful with the length of the scales and sometimes cut the ends at specific angles or with curves, possibly make some relief cuts so the paper can conform better to the curves of the body. And here I'm remembering that I need to leave a portion uncovered for the wings and also at the very tip uh, where the V-tail is going to be attached. Check the video description for partial plans. Uh, they will not show these two pieces I'm attaching. These simply form a cradle for the, the wing to rest in and be securely attached to the body. Before you cover the wing with paper, you'll want to add some chipboard reinforcements, such as a, a strip over the top of the wing spar and kind of a rectangular shape to help hold the dihedral angle of the wing. I prefer to use a glue stick for attaching the paper because it will wrinkle less than with liquid glue, but usually a couple of spots won't bond, so you just have to go back and take care of those. And then you're going to Give the wing some camber. Some people say under camber. I've said under camber many times. I'm not sure if it's a word, but make it an airfoil basically. And you need two little triangular relief cuts on the center line that allow the wing to be both dihedral and have the cambered form. Here I'm just adding a strip of chipboard because I noticed that the wing wasn't quite making contact uh, with the body right on the center. So of course I needed it too and hold the wing in place for at least five minutes as the glue sets up and check to make sure that it's perpendicular to the body because that's very important. Note 
note that the V that you see here is not very pronounced and I made it more of an acute angle um, later on. And this little fin really is optional. It's going to get damaged pretty quickly. If you want to avoid that whole hassle, just leave it off. I kind of like it because it helps me trim the yaw of the glider without having to mess around with the rotovators, which can be a pain in the neck or pain in the tail. The rest is really just detailed work. Um, I did double up the layers on the neck because I needed additional weight forward and I put a bunch of kneaded eraser behind the head where that horn is, um, again to add weight. So that's it for the construction. Please let me know in the comments if you like these more in-depth explanations of how I build my gliders. Thanks for watching.